can be done, guys? It can be done. Right, push that over a little bit. Hmm? Oh. We're oh, just gonna do a. It's not one box, it's two boxes. Falling fall apart. Please. <laughs> yeah! Perfect. There's a package for you out front. Sweet. I'm so excited. What is that? Oh, wow! Oh my goodness, what do we have here? Oh, what is that? Oh, and there's a card too. Jeff, you deserve this. Secret Santa, oh my goodness. <laughs> What's up everyone? I am pumped to be back for our haves and have nots series where we're talking about how just easy it is to compare ourselves with others, with the things they have or have done versus the things that you wish you had or maybe the mistakes that you wish you hadn't made because it's just so easy to compare. I said this last week, but I'm sure that if you thought about your day today that you'd be able to think about at least one, if not dozens of times that you've compared yourself to someone else. Like whether that was a friend or someone at school, a teacher, a celebrity, someone on Instagram or Snapchat, like we all do it. Like we all compare ourselves to others. And the reason that we're talking about comparison this month is because comparison is life sucking. Comparing yourselves with someone else or even with your own past removes you from your present and affects your future. Like, does that make sense? Like when we're so focused on things from the past, we aren't able to be present because we're so caught up in that past thing. Like we're disconnected, which has an effect on our future. Let me give you an example. And I'm just gonna be completely honest with you all, okay? Like I can trust you all, right? It's vulnerable moment with Jeff time. Like just yesterday, I had something come up in the morning that I wasn't expecting in my schedule. A meeting that I couldn't miss and it took up my entire morning. When it was all said and done, it took up a little over half of my day. Like inconvenient, yes, but should I let it negatively affect my entire day? Of course not, but I let it. Like I was so frustrated that the plans that I had for my workday changed, which made like getting things ready for Wednesday night a little more of a time crunch and more stressful, which again, it, it isn't a big deal. Like things happen. I'm not trying to point fingers here. This isn't a venting time with Jeff, but, but here's where the lesson comes in. It's okay to be frustrated by something that happens in the past, but when you start to dwell on it and let it pull you out of your present and let it affect your future, that's when it becomes toxic. And that's what I did. Rather than making the best out of the four hours that I had left in the day, I struggled to focus, I had trouble writing, I was bitter at my morning, and I just sat in my bad mood and let it eat away at me for most of the day. Like, talk about a fun person to be around, right? I was stuck in this past event and it completely forbid me from being myself, like from being joyful, from being productive, really from being who God created me to be. I was stuck and I felt stuck. And I spent a lot of time just praying and asking God to be my strength when I felt burdened. But that feeling of being stuck because things didn't or aren't going our way is something that I think we've all felt before, right? Like we've all been in that spot, but what I hope we can realize today is that when we spend too much time focusing on what happened in the past or what could happen in the future, we miss out on the opportunity to engage with what God has for us right now. And we can see that in the life of Moses. Like maybe you remember from last week some of the tough things in Moses' past. Well, a short time later, God called Moses to lead his people out of slavery from Egypt. And now I don't, I don't know if you've ever been called to lead a nation out of slavery, but it seems like a pretty big deal. And Moses, he recognized that, but there was a problem. He was too focused on his past to see how God wanted to use him in the present. And we see that in his response. He wasn't full of honor or thankfulness. It was, who am I that I could do something like this? I'm, I'm just a stuttering Israelite. How am I supposed to lead a nation out of the most powerful nation's grasp? And now, to be fair to Moses, like, I think I'd be scared too. I mean, I get scared every time I twist open a can of Doughboy biscuits, like, poof gets me every time, but I, I also, like more seriously, get scared when I feel too inadequate to make progress in my future because of the things I've done in my past. And that's how Moses is feeling. It's clear from his excuses and questions to God that he was too stuck in the past to see the opportunity that God had for him in the present. But God, he was letting Moses know his past could be redeemed. 
that it didn't have to negatively affect his present and future, but it could be redeemed and used to make them better. John 10.10, 10, it says, The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But I, Jesus, have come that you may have life and have it to the fullest. Like, it's important for us to recognize that both right now and into eternity, Satan, he tries to steal from you. But Jesus, he came to give you a full and abundant life. Like, he invites you to join him in that kind of life. Not someday down the road, but today, like right now. But now let me just pause for a second to get real. Like, this isn't easy. I, I so wish it was, but it's tough. And just for myself, like, I I'm not always good at this. Like, I just told you about how I screwed up yesterday. But can I tell you why I think this is important and why I think we should hear this message tonight? Because I think God made you too special, like with too much to offer the world, with too much beauty and with too much potential to let it go to waste. And let me just say, like focusing on what you don't have, what, what others have, the bad things you've done or the things that have been done to you, letting those things take over your mind and pull you out of the present is a waste. It's a waste of the amazing things that God created you for. And so please remember what God says is true about you right now. Like, let me just name a few. Today, God loves you just as you are. Today, you are exactly who you need to be in order to be used by God. Like, does that mean you've got it all together? No, but God still wants to use you. Today, you are exactly where you need to be in order to be used by God. Like, have you made mistakes or, or lost your way along the way? Like, yes, but God still wants to use you. And today, you have everything you need in order to do what God is inviting you to do. Today, you have another chance to know Jesus and to live for him. You have today, and today is a gift, and so take it. Like, I really believe with all of my heart that God is calling you to do something with him and for him today. But sometimes, like, before we need to hear God tell us what to do, we need to hear God tell us who we are. And even though we may fall short because we're imperfect, it's important to remember that God, he doesn't call the qualified, he qualifies the called. Now, let me just ask you a quick question. Can you imagine how your life would change if you believed God loved you just as you are, like right now, today? If you truly believed you were loved, what would change? What would you start doing? What would you stop doing? How would you see or treat yourself differently? How would you see or treat others differently? Like, would you start to treat today like the gift that it is? Today is a gift from God, but you won't be able to fully live that abundant life God has for you if you're not fully convinced of God's deep love for you. In a world where we constantly compare ourselves with others, it can be real difficult sometimes to believe that you're valuable and loved just as you are. But you are. Like, you are valuable and loved just as you are right here and right now. And listen, I, I get it. Like, middle school and high school are tough. In fact, I, I remember at some points where I just felt like it was impossible. Like, I would never amount to much. Like, it's just overwhelming all of the things that you have going on. It's an age where you're just still trying to figure out who you are, what you can do, and what your future holds. And it can be really difficult to believe that you can make a difference in the world right now. But believe me, and believe scriptures too. Like, you can. And can I just say, like, you have. Like, through Reach Des Moines, through United Night Serves, and our own service projects here, you've all helped raise thousands of dollars. You've given hundreds of volunteer hours. You've provided valuable resources to multiple nonprofits. You help support the education of an incredible boy in Haiti, like giving him hopes and dreams for his future. And at the very least, you've all, in some way or another, inspired me because of the kindness and love that you've shown each other, because of your excitement to grow closer to God, and just because of the joy that you spread around this place. Like, you are all difference makers. And let me remind you that you can do something for God and for others with the tools and abilities that you've already been given. Like, you have today, and your today is valuable. So what will you do with it? Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! I felt that on my ears. <laughs>